Hello, happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining me. We are going to start a new block for the Splendid Sampler to quilt along. Uh, I'm excited it'll be a two block week this week. Uh, so thanks for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make a, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Together. I'm here for about an hour and I work on projects uh, from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, this year we've divided our weeks into projects so the, the second full week of the month is when we work on the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along and that is this book right here. And uh, we are about halfway through, so there's a hundred blocks total, and we finished one of the blocks up last night, so we'll be starting a new one tonight. I'm pretty stoked about that. So thanks again, guys, for joining me. Let's get going. Let's check out this new block. All right. Oh, and I wanted to share with you guys some things uh, yet. So just a reminder that, to, that next week we will be starting the embroidery of the month and that is our pretty bouquet our bride of frankenstein uh bouquet uh you can actually stitch it without all the scary stuff and uh it will be a nice little bouquet i'll be stitching it on a light colored fabric just so you can see what the same colors look like on a light colored fabric uh, but the bundle that's available comes with this pretty uh, black kona cotton so that is the plan and if you guys saw your emails today, I was playing around and I thought this was a super fun idea, but uh, we have a Tyranno kit, a little Tyrannosaurus Rex kit, and I thought it'd be fun to make a little extra pattern for it. Um, <laughs> so I made a dino dress up pattern. So what this is, is you draw, you, you have your kit or your pattern, and you uh, sketch out the, um, well, you, you transfer the design for the uh, dino, but then this is an add-on sheet that comes with, you know, all sorts of shoes he could be wearing, or a coat, or little shorts, or, you know, all the hats and scarves, and even a mask uh, for winter. So like here are some of the little ways that I've combined it, but you can just take all these little parts and while you're transferring the design, like if you're tracing the design, you can add on all these little things uh, to just decorate your dino a little bit more. I am so excited about it. I think it's just going to be fun. I might stitch one of these up. Uh, coming up here so we can um, so we can play maybe we can vote on what he should be wearing and stuff but anyway uh, that was in the email today I just wanted to share that with you so if you get the kit uh, we also have a, uh, our favorites bundle or the most popular kits bundle that has this guy in but if you get that um, this kit alone or the bundle you will get the download of this automatically so i just wanted to let you guys know about that i think it's gonna be fun i i just really wanna <laughs> i kind of want to make i, I want to make this ice skating uh, uh there's little ice skates there i want to make this ice skating ice skating guy and i kind of like uh he's got his little bubble coat on there he's playing some football so anyway <laughs> i thought that was kind of fun i wanted to share that with you guys all right, let's get going on the new block. Uh, so I am uh, starting the Changing Seasons block. So now this one is by Jane Davidson. Uh, she's one of the authors. And uh, it looks pretty self-explanatory. It is just, uh, we're going to cut, we're going to pick fabric today. Uh, we're going to cut a bunch of squares and rectangles and uh, get sewing this together. And then afterwards, there's a little applique on. So maybe maybe we will use some fun colors for that applique and maybe keep the background super neutral. So let's, let's see what we got. Let's pick out some fabrics and uh, we'll press and trim and all that good stuff. So here's my bin of fabrics for this project. And uh, what I've been kind of doing for this project is whenever there's a background, I'm always making it white. 
Uh, that's just one of my rules I've set up for my particular quilt. Uh, I do want to use some sort of white in here, so we'll have to decide what is white. I'm kind of tempted to have the white be behind these leaves. That'd be pretty, like, bright. Uh, and then whenever I can, or like... For most of the blocks, I am using only my neutral fabrics. You can see there's some bright fabrics here, but I'm only using these like every five blocks or so, um, just because I don't want them to overwhelm the quilt. This is another challenge for me because I definitely veer my quilts towards these bright colors and, you know, my splendid sampler, or not my splendid sampler, my... Um, Granny square quilt is definitely a reflection of these bright colors. So I'm trying to challenge myself. Can I make a more subdued quilt? <laughs> That's not so bright. Uh, so I am erring on the side of just using these. However, like I said, every few blocks, every five blocks or so, I have been adding some bright colors in, like one bright color. But in this case, it might be fun to have those be the different colors here, because I think that's pretty cute. So let's just grab all these. We'll th think through our background first, and then um, see where to go after that. So what do we have going on here? It looks like we need... Okay, four ivory print squares. I'm guessing that is, oh, clean plaid rectangle. Okay, let's just see what our parts are. So we have four ivory print squares. I'm guessing that's these corners here. Uh, eight tan check rectangles. Okay, so that's these little guys. One cream plaid rectangle, okay. Wait, one cream plaid rectangle, four inches by six inches. Oh, and then cut into smaller pieces. I'm like, that is not four by six. Um, all right, so one and a half inch. Oh, four of them. Four of them that are one and a half inches, and then one, that's the two inches. Okay. The blue rectangles, that's there. Oh, and rectangles of assorted prints for the leaves. Okay, great. All right, I think I got my brain wrapped around this. So we really need kind of like four colors plus all our extras. So I am tempted to have this be that blue. So the white to be in place of the blue. Because then if we do pick some of our bright colors, I mean, it's just going to super duper pop on the white. Although maybe that's too much. Maybe I don't want it that poppy. <laughs> what if we, what if we did something else? So that's kind of pretty. These colors still pop on this, this tan, but it's not so crazy. I kind of really like that. Why don't we just do this? So this tan can be the blue, basically. Let's start there. Okay, and then we need three other colors. Let's have these outer corners be the white, because I do want to get my white in here. So I'm just trying to kind of lay it out, how it's reflected in here, um, just so I can start seeing. All right. Oh, Tracy says it. It just has to be time for the color, right? I know, because we've been doing it every five blocks, but I think I missed the last, at least the last um, block. I think the last one was supposed to be, or maybe two times ago was supposed to be um, that. Okay, I'm kind of tempted. I'm really digging these stars lately. I kind of, what if these stars were this tiny, tiny um, square right there? But it would also be stars in the middle. Oh, I kind of like that. Okay. The end. We're going to do the stars for these four itty bitty ones, and it'll also be our center square. You know, let's just pretend this is going to be like one of our leaves. Let's just pretend. I like doing this. I mean, you can kind of see I'm trying to get proportionately what the different fabrics would look like. I'm kind of trying to lay it out how it's here, just roughly, because then my brain can get around yeah, like the proportions of how much white is it going to be compared to this tan. And uh, I think maybe we need more white, so I might trade out a thing. So I do, you'll see me do this. I kind of lay it out how it is on here. So right now we still need this color. So something maybe to contrast these two. What about, this is like a totally different color almost. This is um this kind of mauve color. Oh, it's pretty close to this. Maybe it's too close to that. Oh, here I got a little scrap of it. Ooh, it's kind of... I like that. It's kind of pinky though. 
which is fun. I think it might be, I think I need more contrast in it, but uh, so that's, I'm, I'm talking about these little rectangles here. I don't think it's enough. I need, I need more contrast. So let's, let's maybe, what about this yellow? Ooh, we are getting low on this. Gosh, do I think I even have enough? We must, we must have enough of that. That's kind of nice. That's, this is a little lighter. You can definitely see it against all of these fabrics really well. I think let's go with that. I'm liking this. Why don't we just, I think we got it. So this is, again, this is our four corners will be the white. Then these itty bitty rectangles next to the four corners will be this uh, like yellow check. The stars will be the small, um, the small plaid uh, little squares and also the center. Uh, this kind of little, like, kind of, I don't know, taupey, I think there's kind of like evergreen Christmassy things on there. That'll be our blue. And then we'll just um, grab four different, we'll use all different ones. We'll use four different colors for, you know, I'm just grabbing right now, for our um, little bits around. Ooh, this is going to pop. I'm liking it. So I'm actually not going to choose the colors for the... Um, for these leaves or these petals or whatever yet, just because we can do that tomorrow. We're gonna definitely spend enough time on getting the base first. This is this will be the last thing. So once our whole block is put together, then we can really decide on this fabric. But decision made, we will be using our bright colored fabric. All right, don't need any more of this. Uh, those will be for later, so I'm gonna just set it aside. All right, let's dig in. Okay. I, I think this is looking good. I don't know what you guys think. I'm going to scroll down, see your comments. Stick stuff. Would you like, would you use, what do you call the stick stuff to change clothes? To stitch on clothes? The, Catherine, I'm just seeing your, your question. The stick and stitch embroidery stabilizer. Are you asking if you can do that on clothes? I think I think you can. I think that would be super helpful to stitch onto clothing. All right. Um, let's start by pressing. I just you guys are gonna have to keep reminding me like what's what. I think I got it, but the moment I take it away from my little area here, I'm gonna get confused. Okay, ivory print square. So I'm gonna cut that in the order it says, but let's just press it all at once. Oh, look at all this white. We're gonna need hardly any of this. I'm gonna just press this tiny bit here. That's the funny thing about this splendid sampler project and, and a lot of projects like this, um, like quilt of the month sort of projects. We're, we're, cut, we're using the same fabric, but we're only cutting little bits here and there. So all my fabric ends up being like these wacky shapes that I have to kind of somehow figure out how to cut straight lines and, and all that out of it. Um, so I, I always end up with these oddball pieces. Oh, I'm pretty excited for this block. I'm, I'm definitely in the let's get her done mode. Let's see, which one's this? I'll probably just cut it off the end here to make it easy. So that we get a sewing one is, is nice. One that, um, I mean, there is that applique and they suggest it be to be needle turn applique, kind of what we were supposed to do with the button block or what I was, what we could have done with the button block, like hand stitched. I am tempted to do those petals in the same way that we did the button. So if you remember last night, last night we finished our button and this is all uh, just like stitched on. Uh, I think we might actually use that same technique because I still don't have uh, any fusible interfacing to use to do fusible and I'm still, I'm not really feeling the idea of doing hand stitching right now. For some reason I'm in the like, get as far as you can go mode and uh, hand stitching does not fall into that category. So I'm I would be okay with machine sewing it on again, like what we did um, with the last block. I think that was actually kind of fun. 
All right, cutting mat. All right, let's start with our the ivory print square, which in our case is the white. All right, I'm gonna grab a ruler and I'm gonna want my cutting glove as well and a rotary cutter. Okay, I need four squares that are one and three quarters. So can I even get that? So one and three quarters, it's almost two. So this isn't quite, okay, one, two, three, four. Oh my God, I think I'm gonna have the exact, exact, exact amount I need here. Let's, let's hope. And you know, I'm not doing that much math right now either. All right, I'm going to just trim so I have a nice edge. Get rid of that selvage. You know what? Instead of using the double ruler method, I'm just gonna come over here. I'm gonna slice off one and three quarters. Yep, one and three quarters. I had a double check. I always get nervous in, uh, in the cutting part of block making. All right, I'm gonna just tr barely trim off this edge because it's looking pretty square and I don't have a lot of room to spare here, I think. All right, I'm just literally cleaning up this edge. Maybe getting a little perfectionism me there because that was looking pretty good already. All right, let's um, let's get our one and three quarters out of this. So I need four of them. I could have folded them up and then I'd only have to make a couple cuts, but I'm all laid out here. Let's let's just cut the four. One by one. I hope everyone is doing well today. I was thinking that, I don't know if I said this out loud yet. <laughs> I said it in my head, uh, that this changing seasons is the name of this block. And that's totally fitting right now uh, because it got chilly today. It doesn't, I, I would say it's not quite a winter feel. like that chill of winter, like it doesn't smell like winter yet, but it is a cold, it got cold, windy fall. I think we are in like a wind um, warning or advisory or something today or this evening. So I'm done with all this white. I'm gonna just fold it up and we'll set it aside. Uh, so yeah, it's a breezy, a breezy and chilly. And I think uh, tomorrow we might have like a freeze warning or something. I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to see if we need to do anything with our plants. Okay, so our white pieces are done. I'm just gonna set all these pieces aside while I work. I think I'm gonna just actually sit it right there on the sewing machine. Okay, what's next? Eight tan check rectangles. And I believe eight tan check rectangles rectangles. Yep, that's these guys. Okay, so we need eight of them. Uh, one dimension is one and three quarters and the other is one and a half. So eight and another four would be 12 inches. So if, ugh, this can't possibly be 12 inches. So we're not going to get, nope, we're not going to get it just out of one of these. Let's see, how many can we get though? Uh, let's say we got nine inches. Oh man, math people. Uh, we could do four and two more would be, we could, okay, five. I think we could do five, like one, two, three, four, five. Mm, we might just get six and then I could get the other ones from over here maybe. All right, we're gonna just do that. 
so let's get rid of this salvage. Ooh, get my glove on. Oh, dang, Rebecca says we got up to 94 degrees in central Texas. I, it, we still had the door open. I was at the, at the warehouse today and I like leaving the garage door open and we still have it open. So we haven't fully closed that yet, uh, which we do. I am going to do the double ruler method now. Uh, we do that when it gets too cold. Um, I did wear my little coat all day, although it was still just kind of like a spring coat. Okay, one and three quarters. Yep, all right, let's cross cut this. But I think uh, all from now through the weekend, it's supposed to be pretty chilly. We have a little bit to do in our front yet. We're doing all that grading. What did I say? I think I could get six out of here. So then I need another three inch area. I think I might just, gosh, I know we have scraps too. I should be like digging through my scraps for this stuff, but um, let's just set this aside. Uh, let's just trim. Yeah, you know what? No, I'm gonna get another bit from here. We're just gonna have a little extra and you know what? At this state of the game, this is how we're playing it. We're just gonna have a little bit extra. Okay. Oh, I could go one and a half though, and then the bigger edge could be here. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, one and a half. I should still be able to get three. One and a quarter, three quarters. One and three quarters. Yeah. Oh wait, are we close? One. Ooh, we might just have it. I'm gonna have to, yeah, we're gonna just have it here. So I'm cutting these ones in the opposite direction. So one and a half, and then we'll cross cut to the one and three quarters. Whereas with the other one, we're cross cutting to one and a half. Okay, as long as this doesn't confuse me, we'll be okay. Still trying to, I mean, this is all I have left of this fabric before seeing if I have scraps. So I wanna just preserve it. All right, let's, I guess we'll just cut this little by little too. All right, trim in the edge. Okay, let's flip this around and now out of this, I'm gonna cut one and a half inch bits out of it. We need eight, okay. Barely rectangles. Two. in full concentration mode. Four. Well, I guess I only needed two out of the other one, didn't I? I only need eight. Five, six. Oh well. We'll have one extra. There, hehe, <laughs> those fit well. Okay, so that's six. One, two, three, four five, six, and I need to get two more out of here. So let's start with that one nice edge again. Okay, now these have to be one and three quarters. I needed 
eight of these. Yep, so just one more. All right, a little bit of an extra strip, not too much waste there. We'll save that for sure. All right, so those are our other two out of the eight. Those can hang, hang out there as well. All right, next up, the cream plaid rectangle. Um, cutting bits out of there. Okay, so that's that's this. Yes, that's this. And I press this area. So we need a couple things out of here. We need four one and a half inch square. So that's so that's I need six inches worth. I guess we'll just do it from here. I only need six inches though. Can I get it here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I might just get it right here. That's good. Let's trim that. And then we'll just have to cut two inches out of here somewhere. So this edge looks pretty straight, but I am going to still clean it up. These stars are cute. Ooh, am I, did I not cut through it all? Okay, there we are. Ooh, fuzzles, fuzzles everywhere. Okay, um, one and a half. ruler. The d double um, ruler allows me to not have to move the fabric at all because I have that nice edge. I don't want to putz around with that. Okay, let's get our little squares and then we need that bigger two inch square as well. You know, this is really straight. I'm going to just call that a nice edge. That's good enough for me. So let's actually flip it around. I'm just lining it up on my ruler lines. All right, one and a half. I always have to look again because I, I guess I just don't trust my memory. One. These stars on here are the perfect size though because you can still cut these little itty bitty squares and you'll still be able to tell that there's stars. I think that's cute. Oh, we got a little bit more left over than I thought here. I am doing two and a, one and a half, aren't I? Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, that guy's a scrap. Okay, here's our four, and then we still need a two inch square out of here. You know what, let's use, sometimes for these I like using this other ruler here. So now I should be able to get a two inch thing out of some blob over here, I'm thinking. Yeah, let's just, I'm gonna cut it right in this realm here. So first I'm gonna get a just a straight edge on either side here. A nice square cut. I'm just gonna cut this whole thing off. That's basically selvage. All right, and then we'll rotate it and get two inches out of here. Gosh, in my head, a two inch square was huge, but this is still looking pretty small. Everything's small in these little blocks. Ooh, I'm attached somewhere. Oh, no, I'm not. I am just have the ruler on there. All right, so done with that. I mean, we still so have all this fabric in this tiny little scrap here, so... When, when I, all you're cutting is that, these pieces go a long way. All right, we have one more thing to cut, and again, I'm not going to deal with the leaves quite yet. We'll deal with that um, 
tomorrow. Okay, we need four two and a half by two and three quarters. So if we do to the two and three quarters, that would be eight, nine, 10, about 11 inches or so. This should get us there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Okay, great. I'm gonna just trim it from here just a two inch strip here and I'll cross cut to the, to that two and a quarter, three quarter. These I might, this one I might fold in half to cut. All right, all that little edge going away. And let's get that second ruler so I don't have to move this. Okay, just two inches. there still. Great. All right, we shouldn't need all this. There's, we got quite a bit left. Well, there's still half a quilt to make yet though too. Oh, dang, Kathy, that's scary. Kathy says, uh, had a little panic last night. Her six-year-old grandson found the rotary cutter in the sewing room and forgot to, she forgot to close it, but, uh, she got him. Eee! Yep. <laughs> Good catch, for sure. All right, so I folded this in half. Um, we're gonna just cut them by twos. Speed it up a little bit. So I'm going to get that nice edge first. We can basically lay this whole thing out when we're done, done here. All right, so what was it, like two and three quarters? This could not be right. Oh yeah, we only need four. I'm like, how can I get eight out of here? But we don't need eight, we need four. Okay, two, three quarters. Yep, I'm just checking the size. Let's use this guy, he's littler. Okay, two. square left over here. Great. All right. Tiny little scrap. And we should have our four pieces here. One, two, three, four. Awesome, so we are all set to start sewing here. Great, so we can do some of that tonight yet. I'm happy about that. Let's lay this whole thing out. We are gonna sew like the four corners first, but it is kind of fun to just um, lay the whole thing out. Let's move, let's get some space here. All right, so these are our, um, these are the four kind of in the middle middle here. Okay, and then we got this guy in the middle. That'll be kind of fun. A little subtle, subtle star 
shift there, but that's good. I think I like that. And then we have more stars here. We'll actually work on these four corners first, it looks like. And I mean, this, these aren't all going to perfectly line up yet because we're not taking into consideration seam allowances, so our little sides are going to bleed over now, but in general, I think this is what it's going to be. Oh, that yellow, I think, was a good choice. It pops a little. I mean, all of this is very subtle, right? Um, no big contrast changes or color changes. It's just all subtle, and again, that's that's kind of my goal for this quilt. Can I do a more subtle quilt than, than usual? Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to use paler colors, um, all that. But then remember, we're gonna have these leaves that are gonna pop off of this. All right, and then these are the four corners still, our little white bit. I like that this is gonna look kind of like a plus because we have the white in the, kind of in the background here. Awesome. So in theory, this will all be square. It'll all shrink up from uh, doing it from the seam allowances. So let's do, it looks like we're doing the four corners first. And it looks like we're sewing that row and this row and then pressing the seams open. And it just looks like we do four of these at once. So I think I'm going to just sew, maybe I sew all the top. Ooh. They're a little different. Maybe I'll sew all the, the, the white to the tans, or the white to the yellows. Ugh, or am I gonna really confuse myself by doing that? Technically, they're all the same. And so are these. I'm gonna sew them all at once. Because <laughs> these, are, these are actually the same as these, because if you sew them and turn it that way, it would be the same, so all right. I'm gonna do all the white ones and then all the star ones and then we'll press them all and then, then we'll sew them by rows. Okay, plan done, let's do it. Okay, get that light on. Oh, I suppose before we get too far, why don't we stick our seam allowance thing on? So now I'm kind of eyeballing it, but I at this point I kind of know it's like a hair less than a sixteenth of an inch away from um, this particular presser foot. <laughs> this uh, is a really strong magnet here. I think that looks straight. I think it's, oop, no, I shifted it. All right, I think we're going to go about right there. Let's take off the shoes. I like sewing in my socks. All right, so I need to basically make four things, uh, four of these units. We'll get our little stiletto helping us out. Oop, I forgot to take the fabric piece out of the back. There we go. All right, one. So the backs of these look very close to the front, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on, on them. Yay! I'm happy we get to sew today. It's always, at least for me, a little bit of a bummer when all we do is, is um, pick fabric and cut. Or if we don't get past the cutting stage, I always like when we can get some sewing in. Ugh, but it's always such a relief to get past the cutting stage for me. Um, that's, uh, I still have to say, that's that's my least favorite part. I mean, it's exciting because you're starting a new block and you can start to see things develop, but eh, I could do without all the cutting. Although I think I would be sad if it just all arrived cut for me. It is part of the process, just not my favorite. Okay, so those are our four pieces like that, and now we have to make four pieces with the star. Gosh, this looks the same too, the back and front.
Okay, well that was easy. So we're basically done with that. Now we need to press all these open. So I'm gonna get a new leader so I can take this off the machine. That was easy. scissors. Snip that and all right we got our little chain pieced deal together. I love seeing it all all like this. It just looks like like a little banner or little flags. So all right let's snipple those. These are the white and yellow bits and then these are the yellow and tan or the yellow and star bits. Okay you can go this way for a while. We need to press all of these. And I think after, like, for the next bit of sewing, I think we do actually have to pay attention to to these. Let's try and do where um, we do a lot of these right after each other, kind of how we did the other day. We do have to um, press them open according to the instructions, so that's going to be a little bit of a bear. One extra little step for that. Okay, so I'm gonna just start off by pressing them one way. So we'll just do it like this. I think this is gonna work just fine. These guys. Oh, those stars are so cute. This is another one of my less favorite parts of quilting is, is the pressing. The pressing is depressing. All right. All right, first part. Now we have to go through and um, pop these seams open. I think I think let's just stack them up and I'll go one at a time for for this. Okay, so the suggestion that I've gotten for um, pressing them open is to, you know, you press them one way and then press them another and then it stands kind of straight up and then you can kind of get your finger in there and press it open. All right, let's just hit the other side while we're at it. Okay, that one looks great. All right. Two. Oh, we're gonna get far on this tonight. Dang, it'd be awesome to get a whole third block started. That's that's a productive week in this Splendid Sampler. If we can get two blocks done and even maybe get cracking on another one. I don't, maybe we won't get that far. We got to uh, prep those applique pieces and all that yet. Or that just means we got to do more improv piecing if we get done. Get done a little early. That'd be cool. Having fun doing that. My mom, um, you know how we were improv piecing last night. My mom improv pieced together all of her excess fabric that she got from um, making masks. And she has almost a whole quilt's worth, or she has at least a quilt, a quilt top's worth um, like a large one and like two smaller quilts worth. And uh, I was just talking to her. She thinks that she might actually all, everything that she improv pieced together, she might now cut. So like she pieced this whole massive thing together. She might now cut into it again, but cut it into like nice squares. So like, I don't know, 10 inch squares or 12 inch squares or something. Um, and then put some sashing in the middle because right now it looks like all over the place right because it's just pieces 
together, um, sewn together with no rhyme or reason. Uh, so by cutting them again into squares and then putting sashing might make everything look a little bit more uniform. Um, anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting. So, And then she wants to try that dyeing it too, so that'll be kind of neat. I'm excited to see how that goes. All right, we got that all pressed. We can kind of bring this guy back. Actually, we don't need that quite yet, but it is kind of, it's helpful for me to visualize seeing, seeing this. All right, I gotta relay this out now. Okay, stars go in the middle. Okay, like so. And these white ones go on the outside. And actually, again, I think we can just Oh no. Okay, so we we do have to we do have to pay attention to what direction things are going now. Okay. So this looks right, I think. Outside, outside, inside, inside. Yep. Okay, I think this is it. So now I'm going to just go around these four again and we're going to um sew these together. So I'm not nesting the seams this time, you'll notice. Uh, because I've pressed them open, so I don't get those nice seams butting up against each other. I'm, I'm wondering if I should clip them. I get nervous um, when I don't have those seams to butt up against each other. I think I am going to just throw a clip in each of these, and I can just do that all, all at once. Okay, so I'm just kind of lining up that seam. I'm going to put these in order. So this is, we'll go clockwise. Maybe I'll sew with this side on top, the shorter side. Okay, this is the first one. This will be second. It's like reverse of each other a little bit. So I'm putting the clip right on that seam because I'm hoping to keep those together. Okay, two. We'll go clockwise. So this will be three. All right, let's sew these. This is actually a bit farther than I thought we'd get tonight, so that's great. Ooh, now I got this guy in my way though, so I think we'll just do a few stitches to get it started and then we'll move that guy, but I think I'll keep the stiletto here to kind of hold those seams together. I can kind of feel both seams. see how we do, I guess. Okay, one. I think our, <laughs> did you guys hear that? I think our front door just totally blew open. I think that was our front door just blew open. <laughs> it's so windy, you guys. So I think our screen door just crazily blew open just then. John just took care of it. Oh, and our recycling bins have blown over. Great. <laughs> so that's how windy it is, you guys. Our huge trash bins are blowing over and our, our front door just blew open on itself. Hi, crazy. That was a loud noise though, that scared me. Oh, 
Okay, done. Let's uh, add another leader here. Oh, and Sylvia says, John's up to something. Nah, he just, uh, that's what I thought too. I'm like, what happened? What fell over? But it, it was our whole, I think we just had a gust of wind and. Everything's just blowing down. I'm happy we don't have our, our, um, tree in front every more, anymore. We had to get that cut down because it was rotting out from the inside. And, uh, um, that would have been super dangerous in a wind like this. All right, so I'm going to put these back in order. One, two, three, four. So I put them back in the clockwise order. Not that it matters so much, but right now it's helping me keep track of what's what. So I'm going to press these, I believe. Yep, they're pressed open again. So I suspect that these are all, I mean, it's probably not necessary that these are all pressed open, but I suspect it's because we will be doing, um, in theory, there is applique with this, a needle turn applique. So that you don't want like extra bulk. You want to kind of disperse the bulk equally, I guess. So we are pressing open. That was loud though, man. It's not raining. Um, Gretchen's asking if it's raining. It's, I don't think it's raining yet. It did rain earlier today, but it's that weird, it's been doing that weird thing where it rains for like three minutes hard and then it's, then it's done. Okay, that is a dang good lined up seam. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so that one goes like so. So now they should be the same exact um, height as, as, um, these guys. And that one's pretty good, which means my seam allowance. I'm getting better at my seam allowance, maybe. If it's a little off, like if, it's, if your, um, piece is a little too big or a little too small, it might mean that you're doing your seam allowance, sewing your seam allowance just a hair too big or a hair too small. Our, um, back door would blow open sometimes like that just the screen door and that would make the scariest eerie noise and it was always freaky and it was always super loud and surprising um <laughs> so I, i'm actually surprised at the front door it was windy enough to suck the front door open eek Oh, Nolene says that uh, she had um, high winds on Tuesday and everything was rattling. Ugh. Okay, all these seams are looking awesome, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Seams do look pretty pressed open, but I just, that extra step of pressing them open, I'm not wild about. There we are. Okay, I mean, at this point, we have our nine patch, really. And we got a few minutes left. I think we have enough time to at least sew these rows together. Uh, we might have to sew, we, like, I think we can sew... I think we can get to the point where we have three rows and then maybe tomorrow night we will sew those rows together. But dang, we are cruising through this, this block. So I'm going to sew the first two columns um, and then uh, take that off the machine and sew the next two. And then we'll take this whole thing off and press again. But that's, that's kind of the order of my sewing here. So these first. So I'm going to grab the top. Um, I got to make sure that I'm Everything's in the right direction still. Yep. Okay, we're good. All right, so let's flip this together. Seems to be matching up decent enough. Okay. 
now that middle row. So this is a nine patch, just how in the granny square quilt, even the, though the granny square quilt at this point looks way more intricate, it's basically the same thing of three columns and three rows that were sewn together. So I'm doing that same exact process. This one's not quite the same size, so I think I made my seam allowance a little bit big on this one. Let's see if I can get them to match. All right, so let's take that first one off the machine and sew the third column to it now. All right. Flip that over. This is where we have to make sure that we don't, that we're sewing it in the right order, like I'm not turning something around or whatever, then the design will change, so. Gotta double check, are my white squares still on the outside? Are those stars still on the inside? All that. All right, now I'm gonna take the Last one off the machine again, which is now our second row. All right, and then taking the last one off the machine again, which is now row three. Okay, here's where I gotta check to make sure I have it right again, okay. Whites are at the bottom and outward. Great. Just stretching these out a little bit. Awesome. That's it. That's our three rows. Let's get a leader in here. Easy. Feels good to just crank out a block like this. Okay, snip this off and uh, we should have our three rows. So I believe these are still pressed open. Yep, all right, so let's press all our seams open. Zoop. All right, I think let's just get it from the back and press this way, go back the other way. another seam down over there. All right, let's get it from the front. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. All right. Looking good. Oops, wait, are the whites at the top? That one seam doesn't quite want to stay open. Let's see if it cools open. One more time. There, okay. Now we'll do this one. All of these are open, pressing open. Oh no, Luann says uh, she has a sprained, uh, sprained finger. Ugh, boo. That's no fun. All right, there's that. And I think we will 
sew these together tomorrow. So I'm going to leave you hanging, hanging for tonight. Tomorrow we will um, sew these together just because I think it might actually take a little bit longer than I think because I do want to put some clips in place and line it all up and stuff and that'll take some time. So we'll we'll hop back on this tomorrow but we practically got this whole block done tonight you know minus the applique so uh, tomorrow we'll quickly finish up the uh, um, the main block area and then we'll also start the applique and I think I'm going to do the exact same applique process that we did on the button block so I think for each of those little leaves. I think I'm going to sew it onto a backing fabric, turn them right side out, and uh, um, sew them down by machine after that. I think, I think that might work. Okay, and there we are. Let's lay it down on the white again here. Looking pretty good, getting it together. Ooh, and then tomorrow we get to pick our fun, bright colors uh, for the leaves. Because remember, if you guys are just coming here, uh, inside of these are some fun colors. So here's the one from the book. So all of these fun little like leaves, leaf shapes are in there. Uh, I'm going to pick from all of my fun bright colored ones. I don't, I have been sparingly using the bright fabrics, but I think this one, I'm going to do a different one on each of these and that'll be super fun. So we're going to have to choose our fabrics and we'll have to cut them all up. Ugh, they're all looking mega cute though. Ugh, something like that would be adorable. Ooh, it's going to be great. I'm going to really love this block, I think. So, all right, that is for tomorrow. Picking those colors, prepping those applique pieces, starting to sew them down. I think there is no reason we shouldn't be able to get this done this week. Awesome, so I'm really happy with how this is going. Like I said, this is just going so fast. Such a fun, easy block. Again, the most painful part is just cutting, cutting it all. <laughs> I'm not a fan of cutting all those little squares, all, all of that. Um, maybe that's why I like improv piecing so much is because you can just kind of skip the cutting and just go to the sewing right away. I think that's going to be part of it uh, for sure. Uh, but awesome, you guys. Again, be sure to check out. We have that Tyranno. The, our Tyranno kit it now comes with a, a Tyranno dress-up pattern that's free. So again, this has... Um, like little hats and sunglasses and little mittens. Uh, this one has like some ice skates and some tennis shoes and some winter boots and a little puffy coat and stuff. So these are all just fun little add-ons for your Tyranno embroidery kits. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I think we'll probably do one of these up uh, coming soon. I want to stitch up one of those little, let's put some clothes on that uh, Tyranno. Uh, and then we also have our, our bouquet that is starting uh, next week. We will be stitching this up on the show here uh, all week next week. So that comes after our splendid sampler block here. So awesome. Thank you guys so much again for joining me. Best part of the day is hanging out with you guys. Uh, awesome. Have a great rest of your evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.